Hello and welcome to the sideboard here at the StarCityGames.com Invitational in Somerset, New Jersey. I am Ruben Bressler and I am joined by local boy, local hero, Patrick Sullivan. How far from here do you live? 15 minutes. Nice. So you get to stay at your own house for this tournament? Yeah, well, I, well, you get to parents. if you want to. Yeah, I'm staying with my folks. I oh, grew okay. up in the area. I live out in San Diego now. Oh, sure, but, sure, sure. Uh, yeah, this is my old stomping grounds, and it's great to be back. Absolutely. Speaking of stomping grounds, none in this deck. We only have basic Arabian Nights mountains. Hopefully, we can get that up here for you. Get the nice, uh, the 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 copyright, the trademark right. of the Patrick Sullivan red deck. How many mountains between main deck and sideboard? 150 both turn both decks. 26. I got 18 in this. Uh, yeah, 18 in this one, and then eight in the Legacy deck. Nice, excellent. Well, we're going to be talking about Standard, and you're playing Mono Red. Yes. Um, and the place we're going to start is M14. Now, the main addition from M14 for this deck is the other four lands you're playing, which are Mutavolts. Uh, what... The addition of Mutavolts is very important for this deck. Uh, explain why it's such a big boon for this deck in particular. Well, there's a number of factors. Um, one is... You want to play with cards like Hellrider. I'm not playing with Thunder Maw. That's another card that people like to go to. You have to play a lot of lands, obviously, to enable these four and five mana spells. At the same time, you have to play a lot of cheap creatures to get the ball rolling put your opponent under pressure. Because you want to be playing a lot of lands and a lot of cheap cards and then a couple of expensive cards, you often get these disparate draws. Any mono red player from Standard over the last year knows that you get these hands of five lands, yeah. a Cackler, and a Thunder Maw, and it's impossibly, impossible to beat anyone with these kind of draws. Right. Mutavault allows you to sort of split the difference, where you get to play as many lands as you want to, and you have a hedge against flooding out. Mutavault, additionally, is extremely powerful with Battalion creatures, because it's a free attacker that you have access to at any time, sure. uh, and enables a couple other creatures like Mog Thumpy. So it, it does a lot of different, very powerful things for this kind of deck. So I was actually, I recall a tweet of yours a month or a month and a half ago where you said, has anyone come up with a combo that's better than Fire Fist Striker and Mutavolt for the Invitational, because I haven't found one yet, and yep. you hadn't found one, and now you're playing with it here. In fairness, I did not look particularly hard. Sure. But, yes, this we, is... We, <laughs> we clicked the red, bot, the, uh, the red button on Gather and figured it out. Right. But, uh, but yeah, particularly with Fire Fist Striker, very potent combination, because you can play the Mutavolt on turn one, I guess, if you have to. But most usually, you're playing a one-drop turn one, and then play your Mutavolt into your Fire Fist Striker turn two, giving you natural battalion. Right, and if your opponent... What's really nice about having Mutaball as one of the creatures is it just contorts your opponent's play even if you don't choose to activate it. Right. They have to do other things to play around your ability to act muta activate Mutaball, and if they're playing less efficiently to try to hedge against that, then you can just develop the board with the spells in your hand. It's very low cost to put Mutaball in your deck, and the different angles and extra uh, pressure it gives you access to is very potent. Absolutely. So you have 12 one-drops in this deck. Most people are used to Stromkirk, Noble, and Rakdos Cackler by this point the gold standard in terms of red one drops, but you're also playing Foundry Street Denizen, a card that we that sort of had its breakout at the Pro Tour. Uh, we saw Drew Levin play with it last week in sort of a mono-red tokens-ish build with Dyna Charge. In this deck, not nearly as explosive of a potential, but you're not trying to do that. You're just trying to make it a 2-1 most yeah, of the time. You, wanna get, you need to get on the ground running. I think that these red decks that play eight one drops are really in danger of just not having enough early pressure. I think the hands that you have on the draw without a one drop, unless you have a busted Burning Tree Emissary draw, it's very hard to beat nearly any opponent. Right. You just need to have something on the first turn. Absolutely. I think Foundry Street Denizen is slightly better in the main deck than Legion Loyalist because it, your game one is all about having the fastest possible goldfish. Yeah. And Foundry Street Denizen speeds up your clock against most decks more than Legion Loyalist does. But I was very close to playing Loyalist in, in the slot, and it's possible that's correct. Sure. Uh, this, this deck pretty much can't really take advantage of multiple creatures in the same turn unless you have multiple Burning Tree Emissaries or one Burning Tree Emissary into a creature on turn two, making it a 3-1 once. Still not the most explosive thing, but it's just a necessary you know, Savannah Lions for this kind of deck. Uh, we have no three-drop creatures. The the three-drop creature that you would normally see in a mono red deck is Boros Reckoner, but we're not we're not playing it because of the four mutable. Yeah, you could potentially play Chandra's Phoenix. That's something that you could slot in here. But I think since most of the good decks in the format are playing either Pillar of Flame or Lingering Souls, and in some cases both, both cards, yep. it matches up so poorly against those that it's it's hard to justify playing. Um, I we'll we'll get to Mog Funkies in a second, but Chandra's Phoenix and Mog Funkies interact pretty nicely with one another. That's the major incentive to play it. But I think that it's just poor against 
some of the best cards in the format. Absolutely. There's so many Pillar of Flames around. Pretty much every deck that has red mana will play it, including Jund, which is the most popular deck in the room today. Uh, so we'll talk about Mog Flunkies. It's a little bit of a wonky one. Uh, a lot of people don't like it because they only see the drawback, they can't see the advantage, but if you ignore the text box, it's a 2-mana 3-3. Three, three. Yeah, and a lot of credit goes to uh, Gary Arant, a co-worker of mine, for suggesting Mog Flunkies to me before the Invitational, which is a card I didn't even remember was legal, right. quite honestly. I've seen so little play in Standard over the last year. This is another card that Mutaball is extremely good with. Because, you, again, you have access to another free attacker that you can access kind of at any time. Sure. The fact that the combination of Mutaball and Mod Flunkies completely avoids Pillar Flame, that card can't interact favorably with Absolutely. that. Absolutely. It's awesome. And, again, it's, you know, against uh, other red decks after board, if you put a Volcanic Strength on it, it's outside of Mortar's range, which is their one way to handle that sort of stuff. 3-3 uh, is really, really big, obviously, for two mana. And... Mutaball is the kind of the last piece of the puzzle into making that card uh, reliable. Absolutely, and so your other creature is Hell Rider, pretty much industry standard. We don't have to go too much into that one, other than to say Mutavolt again, an all star with Hell Rider. Correct. Uh, we're going to move to your Burn Suite now. I think everybody's used to Pillar Flame. Everybody knows Searing Spear. This card's a little bit shocking to me. <laughs> you have a pair of Shock in your main deck. That's a card that is. Bad, right? Well, they don't let you play six pillar flames. Sure. So you got to go to the next thing. The shock actually has a lot of a lot of utility that gets overlooked. The difference between an instant and a sorcery is huge in a bunch of different spots. For example, in the first round against my aristocrat's opponent, I was able to kill a turn two aristocrat when cartel aristocrat when I was on the draw. That's and then play a two drop and a three drop. So right. that was important there. It gives you a lot more play against hunt master of the fells than pillar of flame does. And again, this deck is about as much efficiency as possible. You get access to lines like on the third turn where you don't have a three drop, you can activate Mutaball and shock their play. Absolutely. You just, again, it's not always about playing the, the best card, it's just something to fit Something that you need in your deck. And, and, and certainly, especially against decks that have Huntmaster the Fells, uh, they will run out of, of things in their hand that they can use to kill things. And so they will resort to passing the turn with the Huntmaster. So you can untap and with the trigger on the stack, use the Shock to kill the Huntmaster, and then they've just wasted their turn. Yeah, and the fact that Shock has played so little, basically zero in standard, right. means that that's not a card they're even playing around often. So, I, again, it's not always about the fanciest thing. Sometimes sure. you just gotta fill a need, and uh, Shock has been very good so far. It also get, lets you play like you're in 1999 with your Stronghold uh, pre-con deck with Mog Flunkies <laughs> and Shock. So let's move to the sideboard real quick. We only have five cards in the sideboard. One of them we've talked about a little bit already, and that's Legion Loyalist. Legion Loyalist has a lot of text on it. All of the text is basically designed to shut down Lingering Souls. Is that the main purpose of Legion Loyalist? It's the primary one. Uh, Foundry Street Denizen is very powerful against decks that don't block very well right. or don't hit the board. It is very poor against decks that do. Legion Loyalist is the reverse. So you swap those cards against decks where they're playing Lingering Souls or just cheap, cheap creatures. It's primarily against tokens, but another nice thing is a lot of these decks Junk Aristocrats, whatever, they're saturated with one toughness creatures. Yeah. So giving your team first strike is actually quite good against them at times because they they can't block with their Doom Travelers right. and Young Wolves as efficiently. They can't get advantage, even if their creatures can get two bodies off of the Zathra Necromancer or the Voice of Resurgence or the Doom Traveler, they can't gain an advantage off. Right, and the combination of Legion Loyalist and Firefist Striker, I, I played both of these cards at Pro Tour Dragon's Maze. Sure. These two cards in concert make blocking very prohibitive for a number of opponents. There aren't Selesnya token decks in the same way that there were at the Pro Tour, but that style of deck is still a thing that occurs in Absolutely, Standard. Yeah. And Legion Loyalist makes a very makes for a very easy swap with Foundry Street Denizen. I think we've all gotten used to seeing Volcanic Strength and Skullcrack in sideboards at this point. We know the various matchups those are for. If you see a Stomping Ground, Volcanic Strength comes in. Uh, one of the main things that you pointed out early was to get your three toughness creatures, Hellrider and Mog Flunkies, out of Mizium Mortar's range with Volcanic Strength because they have very few answers beyond that. Yeah, most of them are, it's a big bonfire. Right. I, it, they're drawing very, two mortars, it, they need things to break very well to get out of a 5-5 five, five mountain walker. Right, and Skullcrack for things like Drag Tusk for the most part, but also able to take advantage of uh, turning off Blood Artist for a turn or something like that. It's primarily for Band Hacks Proof because that deck has a lot of light gain and their best cyborg card against you is Fog which Skullcrack lines up very sure. well against. Absolutely. I don't bring in against every Huntmaster Thragtus deck because a lot of those matches are playing to the board and you can't afford to react that way. Another problem with Skullcrack in this deck, this is a mild thing, 
is the fact that you have Muta Ball. Since you have a sync for your mana, it's often very obvious when you're holding up Skullcrack because you're not attacking with your Muta Ball. Right, right, right. And when, it, when you have all mountains in play, then they can't get that sort of re necessarily. Sure. Uh, so Skullcrack's a little bit worse here than it is against other, uh, than it is in mono red decks because you often have to signal out that you have it available, but it's still very powerful in the matchups that you want it in. And you have, again, two shocks and four pillars in your deck against random control decks, where Skullcrack is just an immediate upgrade. Absolutely. And so the last two are two ofs in the sideboard that might require a little bit of explanation based on their current place in the metagame. These numbers, I imagine, shift from week to week. The first one is Mark of Mutiny, uh, which is an act of treason that has a, a bit of an upgrade, and since you're not using it for tricks, like sacrificing it to an aristocrat of some kind, you're just trying to get the extra damage. The extra plus one, plus one counter, not terribly relevant, even if you give it back to your opponent. Yeah, I mean, it's an extra, it's an extra point of damage, and... Um, you know, I'm not really worried about giving my opponent back a 6-4 Thrag Tusk versus a 5-3 if sure. we get to that point, and the extra points are super meaningful, so I'd rather edge on the side of Market Mutiny. I, this was almost Traitorous Blood in this slot, but again, the addition of Muta Vault means that double red is a little bit prohibitive. You can get into spots where you have two Muta Vaults and two Mountains, for example, and you can't Traitorous Blood and play a red spell in the same turn. Sure. And since Market Mutiny versus Traitorous Blood is kind of a coin flip anyway as to what spot one's going to be better in, I'd rather err on the side of the card that costs a single red mana once I have colorless lands. Being able to cast your spells, exactly. Right. Speaking of colorless lands, coming into this tournament, coming into this format, M14, one of the biggest cards, one of the cards that had the most discussion around it, was Burning Earth. You're only playing two, and you're only playing them in the sideboard. Is this not impressive? Not as, not as good as people might think? Well, it's certainly very powerful in specific spots. The problem that I have with going all in with Burning Earth as a sideboard plan against decks like Jun is the Jundek can actually play to the board pretty effectively. They can get out in front of you if you aren't uh, playing threats or forcing them to use their removal. And so Burning Earth can be bad in spots where you get behind on the board. It certainly has the potential to be powerful in a couple spots, but I wouldn't want to lean exclusively on that plan to be Jund. Sure. I like a mixture of Mark Immunities and Burning Earth because Mark Immunity can be good when you're behind on the board, and Burning Earth, if you get out in front of them, can seal the deal. But if you lean too heavily on one, then you risk not having a good card when you're in the other spot. So. It's a bit of a hedge. Uh, it's certainly very powerful in specific spots, but I think people who think it's an automatic 4 up in your sideboard are maybe overestimating it. I think that if you went up to 24 lands, let's say, right. where you're able to cast it more reliably on the 4 turn, it would be different. But with 22 and already having 4 Hellriders, which I'm loath to cut at any time, uh, I, I didn't feel the deck could really afford to, to cram that many 4 mana spells in its deck post board. Yeah, the mono red decks that I had seen bringing in Burning Earth had two main deck Muta Vaults and two sideboard Muta Vaults when they bring in the Burning Earths to, to go with that plan. Uh, but you're much more streamlined in the main deck, and so it's much more difficult to reliably get to four on turn four. I think it's really hard to beat decks like Jund with mono red aggro or, and similar archetypes by playing a bunch of four and five mana spells. Like, yes, you can win games with, with Thunder Maws and, and Hell Riders at, at times, but I think if you just let them hit their land drops without resistance, you're way behind. Right. So I'd rather have a very streamlined curve, try to get underneath of them, have a couple cards like Bark and Burning Earth to finish the game out if we get to a particular spot, and hope to just sort of fade big bonfires. I think trying to fight them pound for pound is a losing battle. Sure. I'd rather play as aggressive of a game plan as possible and try to cap the curve off with some haymakers rather than go and play a bunch of 4 and 5 mana spells. Well, you're 2-0 so far in yes. this tournament. Uh, you're playing Mountains in both formats, probably the most accomplished Mountains player playing today, seeing as Adrian Sullivan, Mr. Philosophy of Fires over in the booth. Yeah, Dave so, Price didn't show up. Dave I guess Price I'm in the didn't clear. show up, yeah. exactly. So, yeah, only one Sullivan playing in this tournament. So, uh, and you're 2-0 so far, and this deck looks just perfect for this metagame. So I, uh, I hope that you, you go far and we have you on camera real soon. Yeah, I hope so too. I mean, it's obviously too early to tell, and. You know, I'm really hoping to dodge the blue-white red matchup because I don't think that's very good. But so far, you know, so far so good. I've lost one game, which was a mulligan to three, and the other games have felt I've been in kind of the driver's seat the whole time. So absolutely. Well, good luck to you, sir. Thank All you right. for coming over to the sideboard. Thanks for having me, Patrick Sullivan. I'm Ruben Bressler here at the Star City Games Invitational.